will be down presently, Mr. Nuttall. In the meantime, you must try and put up with me. It is very kind of you to wait with me. Your aunt, uh, Mrs. Sappleton. I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting her, I'm sure. Do you know many of the people around here? Hardly a soul, I'm afraid. My sister stayed at the rectory four years ago, and uh, she's given me some letters of introduction. Oh. Oh? Then you know practically nothing about my aunt? I know her name and address. Her great tragedy happened just three years ago. That would be after your sister's time. Her tragedy? You may wonder why we keep these French doors open on such a cold afternoon. It is quite warm for the time of year. Out through those doors, three years ago to a day, my aunt's husband and her two sons went off for their day shooting. They never came back. Crossing the moor to their favorite snipe shooting ground, all three were engulfed in a treacherous piece of bog. Their bodies were never recovered. That was the awful part of it. No grave. No marker. Poor aunt thinks that they will come back someday. They in the little brown Labrador that was lost with them. And walk in as they used to. She spends hours sitting. Waiting. Watching through the open doors. She won't allow them to be shut until it's dark outside. Oh, I'm sorry. Do sit down, Mr. Nuttall. done shortly before they... Poor dear aunt. She's often told me of how they went out. Her husband with his waterproof coat over his arm and Ronnie, her eldest son, teasing her. The tea'd better be ready when we return, Mama, or there'll be hell to pay. Do you know... Sometimes, on still, quiet evenings like this, I almost get a feeling that they will all just walk in through those doors. I'm terribly sorry for keeping you waiting, Miss Nuttall. I hope Vera has been amusing you. She has been very interesting. Oh, I hope you don't mind the French doors. My husband and my sons will be home directly from shooting, and they always come in this way. Well, they've been out for snipe in the marshes today, so they'll make a fine mess of my carpets. Typical of you men folk, isn't it? They're calling it nervous exhaustion. It's in the family. As you know, my uh, sister. Is the tea ready? Make sure it is. I seem to remember your sister. Yes. 
sweet lady. Yes, your sort don't come down so much anymore. I hope your stay will be peaceful. Are you a shooting man, Mr. Nuttall? Uh, milk. Uh, just a little. It hasn't been the same these last few years. The rain and the mud, you see. It's made an infernal quagmire at the marshes. The doctors agree in ordering me complete rest. An absence of mental excitement and anything in the nature of violent physical exercise. On the subject of diet, though, they are not in such agreement. No. Oh, here they are at last. And don't they look as if they're muddy up to the eyes? but most of it's dry. They'll need to get used to it if we go to war. Oh, please, let's not talk about that. We'll be home by Christmas, you'll see. Chap, who was that who bolted out as we came up? The most extraordinary man, a Mr. Nuttall. He, he talked about nothing but his illnesses, and then he dashed off without a word of goodbye or apology when you came in. I expect it was the Labrador. He told me he had a horror of dogs. He was once hunted into a cemetery on the banks of the Ganges by a pack of pariah dogs and had to spend the night in a newly dug grave with the creatures snarling and grinning and foaming just above him. Enough to make anyone lose their nerve, I dare say. Take my darling. 